but uh, it went well. Back to the meeting. Mike and Key is muted. Mark, you got to get your new place all set up. It looks like uh, it looks so empty back there. <laughs> Stands one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, appreciate uh, David arranging uh, Richard speaking today. It may have motivated me to get my dipole out of my attic and uh, do either a gutter setup or a uh, end fed, one of the two. So, uh, do we have a Quorum call from either uh, vice president. Oh, we got thumbs up. Very good. All right. And I think, uh, I don't know, Paul, if you want to run the approval for the minutes. Uh, for the minutes. Does somebody want to run the approval or do you want me to just go ahead and take the vote? Go ahead. Anybody opposed? Come on, somebody. <laughs> okay, the minutes have uh, been approved. And uh, Paul, you're up for uh, new members. Okay, well, we have a potential of four. As far as I can tell, uh, Ryan Benroth, not here online. No. Mark Schechter. Mark. Can we roll that up? Let everybody see or... Okay, Mark, program manager, technician, not an ARRO member yet. Okay. Uh, you want to come up and uh, say a few words? Yeah. Let me get through everything. This is saved on YouTube for posterity. Oh, fantastic. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark. I got into ham radio back in March of this year uh, when my dad passed away. Um, he was 87, uh, living down in Lacey, Washington. Um, he, when I was going through his stuff, like clearing out his desk, I saw on his desk a little Kenwood HT and the, um, <laughs> a, a manual from the early 90s for taking your technician um, course, study guide thing. Uh, so I picked all that stuff up, took it home, threw away that manual, and started looking online for more recently updated uh, pieces of information for how to take the test, because I think that manual actually included Morse code and, and stuff like that in there, and I know that's not part of the test anymore. But anyway, I studied for a while and wanted to uh, pick up where he left off, which was basically um, he wanted to be part of his community's emergency response team. Um, he lives in a retirement, lived in a retirement community down there in Lacey. And so I thought that was really cool. And I've picked up where he left off and am part of the uh, North Bend Aries team now, contributing to them. Um, I'm part of the uh, Snoqualmie Valley 
uh, radio club, the Snowbark guys. Um, that's pretty fun. I actually just did a drill with them a few weeks back. That was pretty awesome. And I'm helping to lead the reboot of the Snoqualmie um, emergency uh, communication support team, CCAST. Um, and that's going to be really fun when we get that off the ground again, too. We've got a neat trailer that we're rebuilding and, and outfitting and all this kind of stuff. And the EOC there is amazing. But anyway, yeah, so I am a program manager. I work for a company called Salesforce, which is a huge software company. Um, I love technology and education. That's been my background for 25 years in corporate America. Um, and right now, I just have an HT little one that I got from QRZ after I, uh, after I took the technician test and passed that. Um, most of the time I'm tooling around in my car with a little mag mount antenna on top and I can hit most of the repeaters around. And I got myself a, a little Slim Jim roll up that I can hang inside my house. Cause yeah, HOA, fantastic. Um, and really, yeah, so, and that works really well for me right now. So I plan to use those things until they're dust and brittle and can't be used anymore and then upgrade. But yeah, most of my time right now is just helping to volunteer with these local emergency groups. Oh, I also got CERT trained recently. So yeah, following in those, in that path that my dad started up and going way back in the day when I was a kid growing up in the seventies, my dad had in his basement, a bunch of tube systems um, and, you know, paddle and stuff that he never let me touch. But I, uh, I assume that he got out on the air with that stuff at some point too. But yeah, so it's been around for a while. Um, yeah, I'm just doing it now and having a, a really fun time with it. And some of you I, I, I talk to fairly regularly, like CEE, it's nice to see you. Um, yeah, and there's probably some other people I talk to over lunch every once in a while as well and on the net. So it's nice to see you all in person. Please come up and introduce yourselves to me if, if you recognize me, recognize my voice. I probably sound very different. Anyway, thanks. That was really long. Oh, uh, questions. Oh, geez. Questions. Yes. Next weekend. Yeah. So next weekend, I am going on my in-laws yearly camping trip to the Wenatchee National Forest to a place called Titan Pond on Bethel Ridge Road area. And some of you might know where that is. I'm going to bring my HT and my roll-up Slim Jim and chuck it up into a tree to see if I can actually make connect with anybody on Simplex, just to, for grins. Uh, I'm not expecting a whole lot, although there is some elevation there, but yeah. <laughs> I repeat the question. Yeah, so um, to repeat the question, is there a chance that I can move my selfish in-laws yearly camping trip so it doesn't conflict with the much more popular and better event of field day? Is that basically, that's basically it. And what's your name? Ivy. Okay. Hi, Ivy. Thanks. Um, I really hope so. I hope so. I hope that's the case. That, that would be pretty neat. They actually chose this place, even though when the water gets low at the little lake there, it's gross, but they chose this place because we have scattered a lot of ashes there. You know, so that's why we keep going back to the same place. But yeah, so hopefully the the moon calendar that AARRL follows, you know, will kind of out of sync with the solar calendar that my family follows and we'll be able to, you know, do it some year. Yeah. Great questions, though. Any other, any other questions? Don't, don't worry. This is Mark on the on the on the web. Uh, field day has fallen on my anniversary for the past four years I've gone <laughs> and I've lived through it. You've lived through it. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Ah, you're welcome. Thanks everybody. Okay. Just to be sure is Alan Brown. Oh, did you sign in? Well, that's why I didn't think you were here. Well, if you haven't signed in, please sit down again. Yes. <laughs> Come on up. And uh, just to help you out. 
did you sign in for? We must maintain decorum here. That's what I was told. <laughs> Now that we're all ready to go, would you please step up and let us know about you? All right. Hi, my name's uh, Alan Brown, and uh, I got my technician's license uh, in March. I studied by uh, listening to Fast Track for Ham uh, Radio by Michael Burnett, I believe his name is, and he recommended this club as a good club for beginners. I plan on going to the camp next week, and I hope uh, uh, to learn a lot from all of you. Any questions? I have a question. This is A7G, George. Hello? Go ahead. Oh, um, are you going to come? You're coming to field day then, is that right? Yes. Are you willing to come up to the go to tent and try to try to get get on the air? Yeah, I plan on doing that. I haven't been on the air, and I've uh, I've I've kept from doing that, so you can get the five points from me. Great. Well, we're you're, I I'll be running it, so I'll see you up there. Oh, I hope have so. some fun. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And we have one more name. Fu Hyun. Are you here? Are you on the Zoom? Doesn't look like it. And now before anybody asks, um, I'm in line for getting a new pacemaker. They have scheduled me four different times already. And I'm told that this may happen again because of the medical situation between hospitals, doctors, operating rooms, and all that. Um, right now, it looks like I will be somewhere between getting prepped or just coming out on that weekend. So uh, it's going to be a little difficult. <laughs> Anything else? Oh. Um, let's see, Mark, well, no, We're, we've got to have them step outside. <laughs> yeah, take them beyond the uh, glass doors. Okay. Anybody have any comments to make on either of the two potential members? Um, never looked at it that way. Okay, we vote individually. Uh, okay, for Mark Schechter. All in favor? On the Zoom, does that come through? Ah, okay. Uh, that is carried. And for Alan Brown, all those in favor? Looks good here. Looks good there. I declare both, both people are now members of the club. Can we bring them back in, please? I, 
believe me, I will, I will remind them of that. Okay. Gentlemen, congratulations. And as potential members, your first job is to see the gentleman in the back corner who will relieve you of your dues for the year. That has to be done before anything. Thank you. All right, next up, we have the uh, treasurer's report, Scott. Uh, welcome everybody, especially those new members. Uh, as the treasurer's report, I'd like to start off by uh, mentioning that the swap meet audit was conducted this last Wednesday and passed with fine colors. Uh, secondly, our current membership is at 302, a little down from last month due to a few members deciding not to renew their membership. Uh, so that brings me into the fact that uh, your membership is uh, due on paying dues, and uh, please come and see me if you uh, need to redo your dues, and that uh, information is also available online at the Mike and Key .org. So, uh, and we accept cash, check, uh, PayPal, Square, and now Zoom, so, or not Zoom, but uh, Zelle. So please uh, come and see me or check out the website for information. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, any, more, any more officers have any reports at this time? All right, thank you. Uh, standing committee reports. Uh, I, think, uh, I think Alex wanted to say something. Hey, everyone, thanks for coming out to this new location. I just wanted to give a pointer as far as the easiest way to get out of here. Um, those of you who are going to want to travel heading west to get back to central, the best thing to do is to get out of here by using signalized um, intersections. If you, if you go down to Smith from here, uh, it's a stop sign. You've got like four lanes of traffic to negotiate if you're trying to get back to central. So if you head out the parking lot, um, you'll be your car will be pointing west, and you'll see that there's a, a street that's just to your right that continues west. That's Ward Street. You go down to Ward Street, you'll 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 get into signalized intersections, and a lot easier to get back to Central. So don't fight the don't fight the oncoming traffic. Um, just go ahead and hit go down through the lights. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Uh, just a reminder, too, is we'll be here next month as well. And then uh, we'll have the picnic in August. So uh, any reports from uh, the relay editor or the uh, webmaster? Nope. Very good. And we have the essential committee report. Uh, I think, Scott, did you want to say something? The audit committee this year consists of San Sullivan and 7RHG as the chairman, uh, George Thornton, AE7G, me, AD7T, Manfred as a trustee, AD7NR, and Robert as trustee, KD7WMV. And we met on uh, June 14th and reviewed um, the final re financial records uh, of the club and uh, didn't find any issues at all with the slot mate books. Uh, we appreciate what Scott did to organize the material to allow us to do the audit uh, as easily as it went. So thank you. Thank you, Scott.
Yeah, they didn't they didn't pick you up on um oh okay. So this the swap meet uh, looks like it's gonna the costs have gone up and we might have to increase the uh fees. Yes, Al. Okay, so Hal is saying that they're going to be talking about that in the uh, the next swap swap meet uh, committee meeting. Anything else? Anything else on that? I have to adjust this. This is not working. Sorry about that. Any other essential committee reports at this time? Okay, and I think we do have uh, David wants to talk a little bit about field day. Thanks. I got a bunch of notes um, for all of you. So quick uh, for everybody coming to Fort Flagler, um, when you go to check in, if you arrive on Monday, um, when you go to the gate, uh, if you're there super early, you may need to drop my name. The reservation's in my name, David Yarbrough. Um, once I get there, I'll make sure they know it's Mike and Key. So anybody coming probably after three o'clock on Monday, just let them know you're with the Mike and Key at the wagon wheel. You'll be fine. You'll get a, a pack. The park is staffed on Monday. Sorry, parks are open on holidays. I called them and talked to them and they said they would be there. Okay. So yes, please do make sure you check in. If you don't check in, you're going to need a Discover Pass. Otherwise, you're going to get in trouble. If you have a Discover Pass, you can do whatever you want. We'll sort you out later. Um, if you have, if you're planning on going to the wagon wheel and camping, if you haven't already registered with Dick, um, I think Dick's on there somewhere. Um, on, on Zoom, um, so you'll need to reach out to him. Uh, Dick, you want to give us your email address? Because I'll make sure I have it right. He's muted, of course. Oh, he was there. Okay, so I got it. It's uh, reradford.wa7niw at gmail.com. Or if that's too confusing, um, you can email me wa7dy at arl.net and I'll forward your information to Dick, but please make sure. Yeah, he's up there. He's up there somewhere. Um, this... I've got it. Come on. <laughs> I think I've got audio here. There you can go. You, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, my call sign at arl.net if uh, the other one is hard to remember. You'll get a reply from the other one, though. Um, I've got currently 27 camps registered for the wagon wheel, so we're going to be packed in pretty tight. So when you arrive, um, move in close to your neighbors, either move in close to your neighbors or leave plenty of room between them uh, for another camp because it's going to get going to get kind of crowded. Um, and uh, I'm going to be leaving early Monday morning to go up there. So please have your um, your uh, requests and registrations and all in to me by Sunday because I'm not sure what kind of internet I'm going to have up there uh, other than slow. So um, that's about all I've got. Back to you, Dave. All right. Thank you, Dick. So that's WA7NIW at ARL.net. So make sure you check in with Dick. And, and do bear in mind, check-in starts at 2.30 on Monday. Sometimes we weasel in earlier, but technically it's 2.30. So, um, And I do want to remind everybody, please, you know, make nice with the park rangers. We're not special. You don't get to break rules or, like, run, you know, let your dog run wild or do anything. We have a really great relationship with the park, and I would like to keep it that way. So thank you for your support. Um, just a, cu a couple other quick notes. Um, setup starts at 10 a.m. on Friday on the Bluff and on CW Beach. So if anybody, if you can be there at all in any form, I could use, we could use as many hands as possible. Please remember to wear closed toe shoes, uh, bring gloves, uh, bring a hard hat if you have one, but if we have some in the equipment trailer you can use, but uh, we need, you know, many hands will make that uh, light work. So I appreciate all of you that will show up. Uh, if you wanted to show up just for that, I will create a special prize for you. Uh, if you show up and do nothing else, um, it won't involve money though. So um, just just to set it set straight. Um, another quick note: the Friday night potluck. Um, I just have a lot of people who are willing to help, but nobody, but very few people, sorry, who are willing to actually 
do meaningful help. So if you would be interested in doing something like bringing charcoal or bringing the burgers or the hot dogs, you know, something substantive, um, reach out to me. We could use, we could really use some help there. Otherwise, um, thanks to Chuck, uh, WA7EBH, Chuck is on there somewhere. Chuck is picking up all the slack for all of you. So basically everything that I'm not getting a volunteer for, Chuck is going to volunteer to do, which God bless him. You know, he made the potluck go last year. Um, and without him, I couldn't do it, but it would be really nice if anybody else would like to help out, you know, so it's not all um, on Chuck, but, but special thanks to him. You know, I would give him a prize, but I think Chuck like invented the club and has been around forever. So I'm not sure how else I can recognize him, but a, a special double special thanks to Chuck. And then also remember for the potluck, um, you know, please bring whatever you want. I'm not going to, I'm not doing the thing where I try to keep track of like who's bringing what usually it seems to work out but side dishes salads desserts you know potluck fair um for those of us that don't cook or are going to be camping all week store-bought stuff is fine if you go to the qfc in port hadlock and just grab something there's nothing wrong with that uh we won't think any any less of you i don't think um uh and then a couple other final reminders of uh, simplex frequency for field day or for the week of camping is 146.58. We'll try really hard. I'll try really hard to monitor it, especially starting Thursday evening. Um, so if you get in the park, you're lost, you don't know where to go, or you're otherwise confused, you know, give us a call a couple times on 146.58 and we'll, we'll try to respond. I'll do my best to monitor it. A um, couple other quick, quick things. Um, we do need more CW ops for CW beach. So if you can do code, even if it's just for a little while on Saturday, um, you know, Mike would sure love to have some help. So we would love to have you there. Um, so any, anybody who can, can do CW, we got room for you. It's an elite setup, probably the best CW operation in the world. I guarantee it. Um, I just made that up, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not far off. Um, so Mike could use some could use some help there. Um, also, Manfred is our bonus points chair. Uh, thank you to Manfred. He's doing a brilliant job along with Gene um, on working on getting us all the bonus points. Uh, Manfred, is there anything you need? Or are you good? Yeah. So so Manfred's got us all lined up on the on the bonus points, which is awesome. I really I really appreciate his help. That's super important. This was I can't remember if it was Manfred that pointed it out, but. Uh, last year, there was another club that was like within a couple hundred points of beating us in our category. So uh, bonus points will get us over the top for sure. Um, and then uh, just a reminder, field day itself starts at 11 a.m. on Saturday. So again, if you can't do anything else, you know, please, please try to be there for that. Um, and if you have not been on HF ever or in the last year, please visit the go to tent first, uh, because we get points for every person who hasn't been on HF for a year or ever um, for GOTA. So, and uh, George will be back running his GOTA station, which as I understand is going to be epic and the best GOTA station ever. So uh, thank you to George for doing that. Um, that's all I have. I, there will be an email that's going to go out again uh, this weekend, all this information and reminders and stuff. So um, keep an eye out for that. If you're still confused, any, any questions briefly before I got one back. Here. David from Chuck. Yes. Uh, I'm planning on going and picking up the stuff at Costco, the meat, the hot dogs, and sundry items tomorrow. And so if somebody else wants to do it, get in touch with me. Otherwise, we're going to have one heck of a uh, food <laughs> supply. Yeah. Also, if somebody is coming up on Monday, they can bring up some dry ice to keep the uh, meat frozen. Uh, appreciate it. They do not have a dry ice. Uh, deal up here in Port Angeles or Port Townsend. So it has to come from somebody in Seattle, the met metropolitan area down there. Yeah, I'm I'm actually planning on bringing the dry ice. Hopefully I can find some. So okay. Whatever. But but thanks again, Chuck. I got a question in the back. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, will there be a net control operator to handle field day messages? So our current plan is to send our field day messages via WinLink. I know it's kind of cheating. Um, but that's what we did last year. It works. It's super easy. And, and we've got somebody lined up to do that. Cool. Sorry, if we don't have WinLink. Um, we, uh, I don't know if the voice will, will, the WinLink will work. We've got like three different people that can do it. So 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have yeah. a question. So the, yeah. So the question is about the me, the bonus points we get for sending the messages. Yeah, we have multiple people that are WinLink capable, if you will, and multiple radios. So I think we'll have it covered somehow between me and Phil <laughs> and Manfred. We'll be fine. I have a, a comment, George. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about you want to do your own thing? Oh, okay. I I don't talk about other people's field days. Sorry. Um, I, I don't know if you noticed I got enough trouble running this field day. So go forth. God bless. <laughs> Five or 530. There was a net on our on the two meter repeater. Yeah. I don't know if that guy is back this year. I saw an email about it. I ignored it. We're, we're going to do the WinLink thing. It's it's so easy. So, Well, technically speaking, so the question is, what's the other option if the club doesn't do it? Technically speaking, the club never did the traffic net, right? So some guy did the traffic net on our repeater, but but it wasn't a club member. It was somebody else. So, um, so I don't know that it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a comment, George. George, Please. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can people hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I, uh, Go is going to be special this year because I've got all brand new equipment. I've got the latest K4 with uh, two of their, their proprietary speakers and a, and a K-Pod. And a 32 inch screen to display the, the, the great pentatopter that thing has. So come to those those of the who, who qualify for GOTA are going to be operating the best equipment out there. So I encourage everybody to come on out and, and, and enjoy GOTA. Thank you. Yep. Like I said, if you haven't done HF before or you have not done it in the last year, see George first. Uh, comment from Chuck. Any other any other field day questions, Manfred? Uh, oh. Yeah. A quick question. Uh, so um, last year, um, after field day was over, but I was still out there on Sunday night, I drove down to CW Beach to do some mobile photo ops, and uh, the park ranger came by and said, "You're not supposed to be here after dark." You know, so and I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that." Actually, and I said, "Okay, if you wrap up in 20 minutes and go go up, you know, to the camber, whatever, that'll be fine." But I was wondering because he said that wasn't covered by our special events permit anymore. You know, right, right. I didn't know, so I just want to. I was wondering if there are any other parks, parts in the park where you can park and do some later operations like by out by the you know where that uh, uh, right yeah it was at night right okay okay all right okay thank you <laughs> yes at the whack whack and wheel of course okay uh comment from chuck go ahead chuck yeah for the folks that are not going up to field day and want to work it from home their scores can be amended to our score to help the club out so you might comment on that. Yeah, so we covered that in our presentation. I'll make a note to to include that in our in the email that I'll send. So if you're going to work field day from somewhere else or from home, um, which you can do, I, I don't know why you do it. Sounds totally lame. But um, if if you did, I guess um, when you submit your results to ARL for your club or group name, if you put Mike ampersand key ARC, Mike and key ARC. Uh, your points will get added to the club points, which Hold of course- Audio now unmuted, leaving menus, Zoom meeting. Oh, cool sound. Um, all right, any other questions? Tim with a comment. Yes. Um, do you think, it, uh, I'm, I'm in Seattle here. You think I could get in on 5.8 or not? I don't, I don't get into HF or any of that stuff, so. sometimes sort of we can hear people on simplex from seattle but it's pretty hit or miss um, we're yeah. pretty far north i can give it a shot at least if i'm around so 
Yeah. Mark AJ seven L S A. Can you tell me what the date is of field day again? I forgot. Okay. What is the date for field day? I forgot. Field day is next Saturday. It starts at 11 a.m. and it runs for 24 hours till 11 a.m. on Sunday. Oh, the 24th? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yep. I'm it's like mute. this time next week. Yeah. I'll mute myself now. I just was curious. Yes. All right. Anything else? Okay. Thanks, everybody. See you at field day. Thanks, Dave. Uh, any more event committee reports at this time? Uh, so I'm not calling anybody that hasn't already said that they're going to need to report. So if you need to report, please email before the meeting, and that way I can put you on the agenda. I'm, if, you, if you need to report, then just let me know. Come on up if you want. I thought he was like, okay, protocol. Okay. I'll get taller again. <laughs> um, so the activity, the presentation for July, I didn't remember the president's uh, call sign. So they're here, raise your hand. Uh, it's going to be on SDR and Raspberry Pi for July. There, there he is right there. He hoped, don't change your mind on me. The uh, second thing is I'm soliciting uh, for if anyone wants any activity on at the picnic please send me an email. I actually was thinking whether there'd be interest in everyone having a little create your own link to dipole session. But if you're interested in some activity we can do like we did years ago with the, a uh, couple of years ago with the Yaggies build the, uh, the tape measure Yaggies, please email me and I'll arrange it. Thank you. Okay, uh, is that it? All right, uh, on to old business. Uh, is Robert KJ7CBO, is he on the Zoom meeting? Don't see him? Okay. Um, I was, I uh, Washington Department of Transportation uh, individual about doing the uh, I-5 outreach at the uh, Federal Way. Um, rest stop and have not heard back from them. So we're on pause as far as that's concerned until we get any word back from them. Robert sent an email again, follow up with mine and haven't, hasn't heard back either. So we're, hopefully it doesn't take too long for that to happen. But uh, as of right now, we're, uh, we're waiting for uh, Washington state government to get back to us. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see. So any Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um we did have the uh a logging for the uh POTA. Did we need to talk about that at all? Nobody's going to hear you. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, well, yeah. I'm, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, I've started a project to go back uh, with previous year's logs and submit them to Parks on the Air since Fort Flagler State Park is a qualified park. Um, but I'm only doing it for credit towards the club and the people we worked. Um, because I don't think that our past in, uh, logs have accurate information as to who was actually operating uh, the station at each station. But going forward, if we pay attention to that, when you change operators, the software, particularly the N3 JP, whatever it is, FJP software, has a place where you can go in and into settings and indicate the operator call sign. Then when we submit that in the future, 
that individual will get credit, uh, what's called activator credit for Fort Flagler State Park in addition to the club. So we wanna be accurate about recording when we have shift changes of operators, just make sure that you're, uh, you're recorded as the operator in the uh, login software. And that'll be it, help us. Thanks. I'm just gonna hold this. Um... So any other old business that we need to talk about today? Uh, any new business? No new business? Uh, one more, one more thing. Do we have anything for the good of the order at this time? Oh, we have one. Uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, a question for Robert. Uh, do we have any updates on Bigfoot for this year? Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> since you bring it up. Uh, once you get done with field day and have a taste for operating out of doors, you can come join us at Bigfoot, uh, which is a five-day, 200-mile run down around Mount St. Helens, August 11 through 15. Um, you don't have to do the whole five days and you don't have to do the run. That's the good news. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we support all the aid stations along the route and link them with voice comms as well as Windlink reporting runner data. Uh, so uh, I, it's a very uh, challenging event, but uh, if you like camping and you like radio and field day, it might be up your alley. So uh, see me after the meeting. I'd be glad to talk to you about it. Yeah, when I retire, that's what I'm going to do. Don't have the time. I think I think Mike has a Mike has a report on retirement. Is that you have a report on retirement and what it's like? That's okay. Thanks, Mike. Uh, any more good of the order? this time going once going twice okay we have gill make a motion to and uh, we have ivy seconded and all in favor all online too bad we're going to end the mo uh, meeting anyway <laughs> any oh yeah any opposed i'm sorry Okay. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for attending. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, and uh, our next meeting is July and it will be here as well. So have a good weekend. <laughs>